Hello and welcome to Intermediate Financial Accounting 1 Tutorial 1 on Income Statement Presentation. The purpose of this tutorial is to illustrate the preparation of a basic single step and then multi step income statement under Accounting Standards for Private Enterprise or ASPE and a Statement of Comprehensive Income under IFRS. This tutorial consists of five learning objectives. The first will be to illustrate how to prepare a single step income statement under both IFRS and ASPE, also known as ASPE. The second objective will be to illustrate how to prepare a multi step statement under IFRS and ASPE. The third learning objective will be to distinguish between income statement presentation by nature versus function. The fourth learning objective will be to review the presentation of other comprehensive income, also known as OCI, in an IFRS statement of comprehensive income. And finally, we will review the presentation and disclosure of earnings per share, also known as EPS, on an IFRS income statement or statement of comprehensive income. This tutorial is based on the Endeavor Corporation A example, so please make sure that you download the accompanying file so you can follow along. There are two requirements for this problem that will be covered in tandem in this tutorial. The first is which we will prepare an ASPE income statement, and the second requirement is to prepare an IFRS statement of comprehensive income. So we will now begin with illustrating the basic single step income statement and show the difference in presentation between ASPE and IFRS. We will now begin by building out a single step income statement prepared under ASPE. The first thing to notice is our title begins with income statement and it is for the year ended December 31st, 2020. You may recall from your prerequisite course that the correct title for an income statement is for the year ended or period ended if it is less than, uh, than a year. And also the scale of our income statement here is in thousands. So when we say net sales of 43,800, we mean 43,800,000. Now also notice that all revenues and gains are presented first with sales reported on a net basis. So this would be net of any sales discounts, any allowances or any sales returns. We will see these disclosed separately on a multi-step statement, but on a single step income statement, they are netted out and only reported as net sales. Our example here also includes a gain on disposal of a plant asset of 3,500,000 and some rental income of 1,200,000. So total revenues and gains for the year ended December 31st is 48,500,000. Next after revenues and gains, we have a section for expenses and losses. Now notice here that cost of goods sold is reported as part of all expenses and losses and there is no gross margin disclosure. We will see that in a multi-step statement. In addition, there is no prescribed order to present the revenues and expenses. However, common practice is to present in order based on dollar value, which is what I've done here. Alternatively, sometimes expenses are recorded in alphabetical order. So in our example here, we have cost of goods sold of 14725000 some selling expenses, administrative expenses. We have a loss due to a nuclear meltdown and some interest expense. So our total expenses and losses is $41,639,000. Next, once all revenues and expenses are presented, we calculate net income from continuing operations before income tax. So our revenues and gains of $48,500,000 less our expenses and losses of uh, 41,639 gives us income from our continuing operations before tax of 6,861,000. And then what we do is we show what the income tax on that uh, income before tax is. And if you review the data, you'll see that the applicable uh, income tax rate is 35%. So 35% of 6,861,000 is 2,401,000. And that will leave us with what we call income from continuing operations of $4,460,000. So after we have determined our income from continuing operations, we look to see if there are any discontinued operations that must be reported as well. And that means at this point, it's important to distinguish between continuing and discontinued operations. 
A discontinued operation will arise if management or the board intends to dispose of an operating unit or business unit, perhaps such as an underperforming division like the sales or services division we have in this example. The assets related to the business unit are classified as held for sale separately on the balance sheet and classified as discontinued operations separately on the income statement. And that's what this section is here. This is also known as a DO. At that point, all operating profits or losses generated by the DO are disclosed separately on the income statement in this special section. Now note that even though the division or business unit may not actually be disposed of or sold, the income statement classification is still discontinued operations. The special section includes any profits or losses generated during the company's fiscal year or up to the point of disposition of the discontinued operation. And those gains and losses are presented on an after-tax or net-of-tax basis. And I'll go through these numbers in a minute. And then following is any gain or loss on the final disposition of the services division. And that is also presented on a net-of-tax basis. If the unit was not disposed of yet in the current fiscal year, then the discontinued operations section would only contain gains and losses or operating income or profits generated to year end, and this would not exist. So in our Endeavor Corporation example, the discontinued services division ended up generating a pre-tax profit of $1,552,000. And so based on the data, we know that the tax rate is 35%. And so if we take that million fifty two times 35%, that'll give us taxes to be paid on that income of 543,000, resulting in an after-tax profit of 1,009,000. And so that's proven here by taking a million five fifty two times 100% minus 35%. This gives us the after-tax amount. Then in terms of the loss on the disposal of the services division, so the company continued to operate the services division during the year and then it sold a division during the year and it sold at a pre-tax loss of $3.2 million. And so that loss multiplied by 35% results in a tax benefit or savings of $1,120,000 and the after-tax loss would be Two million and eighty, so three point two million times sixty five percent is two million eighty thousand dollars. And so the correct disclosures are as you see here income from operation of discontinued services division in parentheses net of tax five hundred forty three thousand loss on the disposal of the services division again in parentheses net of tax of a million one twenty. And so that means that the discontinued operation between the additional profit of operating the services division less the loss on disposal produced a net after-tax loss of $1,071,000. The final result, however, is net income overall for the entire company of $3,389,000. So now we will illustrate the preparation of a single-step IFRS Statement of Comprehensive Income. We begin with a title, however, IFRS makes coming up with a title for our statement a little more complicated than under ASPE. And so we're presented with some options for titles depending on whether or not OCI exists and how we want to present the statement if OCI does exist. So let's look at this top section here. We've got some choices of titles. Of course, always the company name and always for the period ended, no problem. Except now we can make some choices here. So if OCI does not exist, so if other comprehensive does not exist, or if OCI does exist, but we want to present the statement of comprehensive income using a two-statement approach. So comprehensive income presented as two separate statements, and we'll see that when we look at one of the next tutorials on presenting other comprehensive income. If those cases exist, so if again, if we have no OCI or if OCI exists and we want to present by a two statement approach, then we can choose from some of the following names. We can go with statement of income, we can go with statement of profit if there's profit, or statement of loss if there's a loss. Alternatively, if OCI exists, and we're presenting using a single statement approach. So basically we're going to include the net income and comprehensive income on the same statement. Then we would look at something like this. We can call it a statement of comprehensive income. We could call it a statement of profit and comprehensive income if it's a profit, or we could call it a statement of loss and comprehensive income again for the year ended. 
So our example is going to be based on OCI existing and we will present a single statement approach. So we will use a statement of comprehensive income. Okay, so now that we have our title straightened out, our Endeavor Corporation Statement of Comprehensive Income. What you'll notice is that everything right up until net income is pretty much the same as under ASPE with basically one notable exception. It is here what ASPE called interest expense, we now call finance expense or finance costs under IFRS. Otherwise, everything else for this single step, again, this is a single step statement. We have the same presentation of revenues and gains, the same presentation of expenses and losses, in this particular case presented in de de descending order of uh, dollar value, giving us our income from operations before tax, our tax expense, income from continuing operations, and then our discontinued operations Again, that is presented both under ASPE and IFRS, giving us net income of $3,389,000. The only big difference now is our other comprehensive income section, which does not appear under ASPE, but does appear under IFRS. Other comprehensive income, or OCI as it is also known as, is a special category for gains and losses that are generated that are not yet to be booked through the profit and loss statement or the income statement. Some examples of comprehensive income items might include certain gains and losses on foreign exchange, unrealized gains and losses on remeasurement of certain types of investments to fair value, uh, revaluation of property, plant, and equipment, etc. So there's a lot of items that can be included in here. Please make sure that you consult your text for additional examples of items that could be included in OCI. Now one of the next things we might notice here about our OCI section is that there are actually two subclassifications or subcategories. The first category represents items that may be reclassified subsequently to profit and loss. So this is a parking spot, OCI is a parking spot for things that will never be reclassified to profit and loss or things that may subsequently be reclassified to profit and loss. The second subclassification here is just the opposite. So things that will not be reclassified to profit and loss. So in our example, what we have here is a gain on revaluation of assets. This is something that you won't cover till later on in the course when you get once we get to revaluations. However, suffice it to say that certain types of revaluations of assets may subsequently be reclassified to profit and loss. So that's why it uh, is the disclosed in this subclassification. The other item that we have here is an unrealized holding gain on investments. And these particular types of investments would be fair value through other comprehensive income. And this type of unrealized holding gain or loss will not subsequently be reclassified into profit and loss. So based on the data that we had, we are told that there is a uh, an after-tax gain on revaluation of assets of $1,635,000. And even though the data tells us that this amount is already presented or this is the after-tax amount, we still have to make sure that we report what the tax effect of any items in OCI are. So if we take this $1,635,000 and we divide by the after-tax rate of 0.65, we will end up with a before tax gain on revaluation of about 2,515. And then if we multiply that by 35%, that gives us the 880 net of tax value for the gain on revaluation of assets. And so reporting nicely, the gain on revaluation of assets in parentheses net of tax 880 is 1,635,000. And then the next item that we have is an unrealized holding loss on investments. And that is something that would not be reclassified into profit and loss. The data tells us that we have a $378,000 loss. This is after tax. And so in order to get our proper disclosure, we would have to take this number. And so if we divide by 0 0.65, that will give us about 582. 2,000 roughly, and then times our 35% tax rate gives us our 204,000. So the correct disclosure, unrealized holding loss on investments, in parentheses, net of tax benefit of 204,000 gives us uh, $378,000 loss. 
The combined impact of other comprehensive then is to add uh, 1.25 million to the net income, resulting in total comprehensive income. So notice here, up here we use the word net, and down here now we use the word total. So total comprehensive income, $4,646,000. So now what we'll do on this slide is show the two side by side. So on the left we have our Endeavor Corporation income statement for the year ended December 31st, 2020. This presented on the left under ASPE, giving us net income, $3,389,000. And on the right, we have our IFRS statement of comprehensive income with up to this point net income still 3,389,000, but now including an other comprehensive income section with both items that may be reclassified and items that will not be reclassified, resulting in total comprehensive income of 4,646,000. Again, the OCI is not required under ASPE, but is required under IFRS. To this point, the Endeavor example we've been using presumes that the company earned a profit, but what if there was a net loss? So what we'll do is illustrate the single step income statement, again, under both ASPE and IFRS, but in a situation of a loss. And so to make it easier, what we will do is we will take the loss on nuclear meltdown and instead of it being 2,300,000, we're just going to inflate it to 22,230,000 and that will create a loss situation. So on the left is our ASPE statement once again, our income statement, and you'll notice that the only difference is the change in the loss on nuclear meltdown to now be $22,300,000. Of course, this results in some changes here, a loss from operations before tax of $13,139,000, resulting in an income tax benefit of $4,599,000, and instead of a profit from continuing op operations, we have a loss of $8,540,000 around the continuing operation. On the discontinued operation, nothing changes. This part is exactly the same. We still have our income from operating the discontinued services division of a million nine net of tax, the loss on the disposal of two million eighty net of tax, and we're left with net loss in this case of nine million six eleven. And if we look on the IFRS side now, everything is exactly the same right up until the net loss. So here's the nuclear meltdown. Here are the changes resulting from that uh, additional loss. And you'll notice here that the OCI section is the same as previously identified. But this time our total comprehensive loss is $8,354,000. So now we will move on to the multi-step income statement and combine this learning objective with the different approaches to presenting expenses, basically either by function or by nature. And again, we will look at multi-step statement under both ASPE and IFRS. Back to our Endeavor Corporation example. On the left, we've got a multi-step income statement presented by function. Now, the first thing you'll notice is that the revenues are presented differently in the multi-step statement than from a single-step statement. Here, revenues and include any and all sources of revenue which might include product sales or service sales from normal operations. If applicable, we could have sales discounts, allowances, returns deducted from sales as contra accounts that result in net sales. And that's what we have here. So we have sales of 47500 and then we have a contra of sales discounts. And again, this could be sales discounts, allowances, but we've got sales discounts of $3,700,000. What's missing here are other uh, revenues that would end up in a different section that we'll get to in a little bit. Then what we do is, once we have figured out what our net sales are, so in this case 43800 we subtract cost of goods sold, also known as COGS, but on the financial statements we write it nicely and fully as cost of goods sold. So our cost of goods sold of 14725 giving us what we call gross profit, and that's this item here, gross profit of 29075 Then it's where the rubber hits the road when it comes to functions. So in organization by function, items are expensed and disclosed separately by business function. So for example here we see that rent is split up into uh, rent relating to sales expenses and rent relating to administrative expenses or office. 
And you might also notice that presenting it by function here results in some duplication. We've got amortization here and here. We've got rent in both places, salaries in both places. And that's just the way it is with an income statement presented by function. Then on the right, we've got a statement presented by nature. Rather than business function, we're focusing on the nature of expense. And so here, there is no splitting out of expenses by business function, no selling function, no administrative function. We just basically combine all of the salaries and wages. So if we look at this 8 million and 75 and this 6175, that would actually give us the salaries and wages of 14 million 250. The same thing if we combine the rents would equal the total rent, etc. But regardless of the method chosen, whether function or nature, the total expenses would still end up being 23 million 971. If I take 13 521 plus 10 450, would still give me the same total and the result then is regardless of presentation by function or by nature my income from operations is still 5,104. So what we will do now is take a deeper look at a complete multi-step income statement presented under ASPE. All right so now we'll begin our ASPE multi-step statement and we will show this one by nature. Uh, we could have done it by function but given the space that we have on our screen it's just easier to present it by nature. On the left we have the beginning of the statement uh, ending at income from uh, continuing operations of 5,104 and that amount was the same as a single step and that becomes the beginning for, uh, point for the rest of our statement. The first thing that we have is other revenues and gains. And you may recall in the single step statement, all revenues and gains were grouped together in revenues and gains, and then all expenses and losses were grouped together except for income tax. In this case, there's a separate section for revenues and gains, which can include revenues from other sources that are not part of normal operations, like interest income, rental income as we have here, gains on disposal of plant assets. We could see realized or unrealized gains on remeasurement, of fair value through net income investments and others. And then along the same lines is a section for other expenses and losses, which could include interest expense, which it does here, realized or unrealized losses on fair value through profit and loss investments, and losses due to unforeseen events like nuclear meltdowns or floods, fires, any kind of natural disasters, anything like that. And what we end up with then is income from continuing operations of 6,861,000. Then we take our income tax expense, giving us 2,401,000, which is the same as before. And this gives us our income from continuing operations, 4,460,000. Then we present as before discontinued operations, which was the same, resulting in net income of 3,389,000. And now we will look at the IFRS presentation of a multi-step income statement. So our IFRS multi-step statement begins with our proper title, Statement of Comprehensive Income for the year ended December 31st, 2020. This part is presented exactly as it was previously. So revenues uh, consisting of sales and sales discounts, giving us net sales, our cost of goods sold, and our gross profit, all the way down uh, through our expenses to give us income from operations of 5,104. And now we'll continue the statement on the next slide. Next we have our other income, so the gain on plant assets, the rental revenue, then other expenses, so the nuclear meltdown and our finance costs. Remember that under IFRS this is called finance costs or finance expenses as opposed to interest. And then this gives us our income from operations before tax, income tax expense, and then our income from continuing operations and then disclosing the discontinued operations as before, giving us net income of 3,389,000. And that's where the ASPE statement ends. And then the last part of our statement, this thing's so long, we're running out of room, we need to do it over multiple slides. We have the, of course, the net income, and then our other comprehensive or OCI section, again, showing items that are, are maybe reclassified into profit and loss. So we have our gain on revaluation of assets of 1,635,000, are items that will not be reclassified, and so we have our unrealized holding losses on uh, investments, 378,000, giving us uh, OCI of 1,257, and total comprehensive income of 4,646. And this was the same as a single step as well.
Finally, the last distinction or difference between uh, IFRS and ASPE is a very important one, and that is the mandatory disclosure of earnings per share. Now, the actual calculation of EPS, this is what we call earnings per share, EPS can be somewhat complicated and involved uh, and is covered in greater depth in the next level course. But suffice it to say at this point that the required supplementary disclosure on the income statement is to show both the basic and the diluted EPS for income from continuing operations and the discontinued operation, but not on OCI. That's very important. A lot of students make that mistake. So at this point, don't be concerned about how the basic and diluted EPS values are calculated. That's covered more in tutorial four. Just be aware of the fact that IFRS requires EPS disclosures and they should look something like this if you have diluted EPS in addition to basic EPS. And now what we'll do, as we did with the single step statement, we will look at the multi-step statement in the situation of a net loss, just to give us a different perspective to see how things would look. Using the same variation on the previous scenario, we will assume that the loss on the nuclear meltdown again is $22,300,000. So under a loss scenario resulting from the loss of nuclear meltdown, notice that up to our income from operations, it's still the same as we had previously seen in a profit situation and the same as under ASPE. And that's because our loss from nuclear meltdown now ends up in other expenses. And so the first part is uh, unchanged. So where our statement continues from the income from operations of 5,104, again, our other income consisting of the gain on disposal of the plant and rental income is the same as previously. Here's the only difference. Our nuclear meltdown, instead of being 2,300,000, is 22,300,000. And that now gives us a loss from operations before tax. As we saw previously when we illustrated the single step statement with a, a loss, Again, our income tax recovery and our net loss from continuing operations of 8,540,000. The discontinued operations section, the same as previously, but in this case, our loss is 9,611,000 versus a profit. Then after our net loss, because we are presenting an IFRS statement, we have our other comprehensive income section. Again, items that may be reclassified, items that will not be reclassified to profit and loss, our gain on revaluation of assets, our unrealized holding loss, giving us the same discontinued operation uh, amount of 1.257 million, but resulting uh, in a comprehensive or total comprehensive loss now of 8,354. And that was the same as a single step example we had seen previously. And then finally, of course, we have our required uh, earnings per share EPS disclosures. So this time we have a loss from continuing operations and then a discontinued operations value and then a total net loss of 96.11 per share. That's uh, a function of the net loss. Again, don't worry about how the basic and diluted EPS calculations came about. We will cover that in another tutorial. And now is a good opportunity for us to review some key points to remember. The first point is that uh, single step income statements group all revenues and other income gains, etc., into a single revenues section. In addition, the single step statement groups all expenses except for income taxes and discontinued operation, of course, into a single expenses section. Third, the single step statement again, they are acceptable both under ASPE and IFRS. The fourth point to remember now relates to the multi-step statement. And here, the multi-step statement groups revenues, expenses, and gains and losses differently, all into special separate sections. The fifth point, is that the multi-step statement can be presented by nature or by function, and that relates, again, only to expenses, not revenues. And lastly, the multi-step statement for IFRS and ASPE are identical, except for the inclusion of the comprehensive income section and the earnings per share disclosures, which are required only under IFRS. So this concludes tutorial one. We hope you found it useful.